Well, the feature we're ultimately going to talk about is called Radar. But I got to be honest with you, when I hear radar, I think about space balls. You've never seen space balls? What the heck is wrong with you? Oh, it's amazing. And they're talking about the radar on the spaceship. And it's like there's a coffee machine. And instead of the, it's like a Mr. Coffee. And then they, they watch the radar on a Mr. Radar machine. It's Mr. Radar. That's like the funniest thing. And then he spits out the coffee. Too hot. Now, why am I even talking to you? Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com, and today we're going to take a look at a new feature in Robopack that's designed to keep your apps up to date, even if they are found on devices that we're not even targeting. And keeping all those straggler apps up to date is really what we all want. Now, I'm still just like, I'm going to do the video, but frankly, I'm just upset that not only, you know, you don't know Spaceballs well enough to, to quote it. You, you didn't even see it or remember it. I mean, I think Spaceballs is a required viewing for this field of work. Get Rubik's solving for the modern workplace. One of the biggest issues we face in terms of keeping our third party apps up to date is the apps we don't know about. We can see the apps we're pushing here and on individual devices, we can even see discovered applications. And while that data is there, you know, we want to look at this holistically across our apps, right? You know, and more often than not, we're in situations where there are apps on devices that A, we didn't even know were there, or B, you know, they're there, but they're an older version and we have no way to patch them because we're not necessarily targeting them. Probably because we didn't even know they existed. All right, so I'm going to head over to Robopack and click on Radar. Radar is the newer feature. We covered this in our last video about Robopack, where um, basically you can scan your tenant and it'll show you both apps that you're pushing through Intune and things that it finds discovered on the endpoints. And this is really nice because we can just bring them in and start targeting our uh, devices by using the Robopatch waves. But like I said, Oftentimes, you know, if you're not targeting a specific group that has those devices, we might miss it, especially when you start looking at things like, here we go, uh, visual C++, redistributable, whatever. You know, I have six versions across like 14 devices, and that's really a problem for me, right? So how do we get a handle on this? So the new feature in Radar is if I go to one of my patch flows, Here's all my apps. You can see some of them have this radar icon. Well, what does the radar icon mean? That means I have radar tracking enabled. And radar tracking is a new feature that essentially adds to the waves. So basically, once I've reached my uh, final deployment wave and I'm deploying this outside of, let's say, my test devices, things like that, this is gonna go ahead and look through any device it finds with the app that's not up to the date that my waves are deploying at. So let's look at enabling this. Let's look at this uh, Acrobat Pro application here. So I'm gonna set up a robo patch flow for it. Pretty standard, all the, I'm gonna leave the settings on by default and I'm gonna create that flow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by adding a deployment wave. Now notice I immediately have the new option for radar tracking, right? automatically update any older discovered versions of the app. And of course, if you want to, you can read more about radar tracking. They have a pretty good write up on it um, and they'll go over the details for you there. So the first thing I'm gonna do is set up my wave. Uh, perhaps I have a pilot wave, we'll call this pilot. Click okay. And I'm gonna add my existing pilot group. And remember, you can search through multiple tenants um, and it'll tell you on the right which tenant that group is in. So you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, having to be specific per tenant. You can if you want, but you don't have to. So I have that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my second deployment wave, which I'm going to refer to as production. So I have pilot and production. And then this will go to uh, my broad uh, device group. Actually, I'm going to send this to my cloud PCs. So now that that's there, what I can do is I can turn this to enable all. And Robopack basically, it tells you right here, it's pretty easy. It'll check devices periodically with older versions of that app and update them. Now, how is it doing that? Because one of the things we know Intune won't do is assign 
an app to a device once. Like you have to have a group involved. So we don't have groups. In fact, that's the whole point. The devices are just out there and these apps are stragglers. So what is it gonna do? All right, well, that's the really cool part. So I'm gonna tell it to go through all my tenants or just one tenant, it doesn't matter. But when it's enabled, it'll create its own assignment. So let's go ahead and get that set up. And now let's go look at something that's already been through this process. So here's a good example. I have Visual Studio Code. I have it deployed to only one wave. It was complete, but I also set up uh, a tracking, but I also set up automatic radar tracking with it. Well, what did that do? When I head over back to Intune and I wanna go look at my groups, I can search radar. And you can see I have two groups here and this is the group that's tied to Visual Studio Code. And there is one device on it. So essentially what happened is Robopack figured out that this one device uh, had Visual Studio Code installed and it had a prior version. Now it also wasn't part of the wave. Right, it wasn't part of WinCorp or WinCloud for whatever reason. So what radar tracking did is it filled the gap by creating this group and manually assigning the device so that it gets patched. Now, when we go to take a look at the app, we can see it added that radar group to the required install by itself. We didn't have to do anything there. So Robopack was able to essentially orchestrate its own on-demand patching of that Straggler app without us having to do anything at all. And then it can go ahead and, you know, keep updating itself or, you know, do this to some additional apps. This is a very important feature, right? I thought it was really cool when Radar first came out and was able to just find these apps for us and give us the ability to take them into Robopack and manage them. But, you know, what we don't account for often is our own operational stuff. Like, what if you're just not targeting a group of users or devices that is in need of a patch. It happens. We don't know all the time who's using things. You know me, I talk about device migration all the time. Well, what happens when we acquire a new business and those devices have apps on there that are all over the place, right? Yeah, we got to get a handle on it so we know about future deployment, but how are we going to make sure that they're all patched? Because at the end of the day, that's a massive, you know, attack vector from a security mindset. Um, so yeah, I really like that they added the tracking and it kind of just goes out there and patches and cleans up for us. So check it out if you haven't. Um, you know, there's the Robopack website. There's uh, They got their own university now of all kinds of stuff. My buddy Dean's over there making a lot of content about it. So, you know, if you find yourself struggling with these kind of things, I, I really think this can help you out. Let me know in the Discord what your thoughts are if you're using it. And we'll be seeing you.